what do you think the biggest mistakes people make in venture are? And that could either be just talk about what mistakes you feel like you've learned from your investments, maybe what you've observed from others, but any observations there on the flip side of the coin? I think a lot of both investors and founders make this mistake of shying away from the biggest risks in a business by thinking you can make steady incremental accomplishments that will eventually allow you to tackle the biggest risk. And that I said, that is like the worst way to think about businesses. Instead, you should be stack ranking the risks that could potentially kill your business and taking on the biggest risk first at the earliest stages of the company, not trying to wait until later stages. Because it turns out if you wait until the later stages and the biggest risk didn't work out, then your unit economics don't work. The entire thing effectively falls apart. And so... I think that's by far the biggest mistake the founders make and then investors make by not necessarily assessing that. So as much as I do believe most of the job of an investor is thinking through what is the upside if this works and making sure to realize how large it could be, i.e. like, yeah, could the crazy Portuguese team actually have a shot at becoming a multi-billion dollar company? Like, yeah, they could potentially treat all of MSK in the United States. And that's bigger than all of oncology combined. That is a massive, massive market that they could go after. But you do need to also think about, okay, well, what are the biggest risks to this business? And do the founding team members have the expertise necessary for the core risks? So maybe to like fast forward in some ways to Varda, because it's also how I thought about like building the team around Varda for the incubation was there are three core risks for building a space factory. One, getting the financing that you need because it's a capital intensive business. Two, you need to be able to actually produce things in microgravity. And three, once you produce them, you need to bring them back down. So the ideal founding team for something like Varda would have world-class people across all of those three. On number one, I'd like to think I'm pretty world-class at fundraising at this point, mostly from the fact that it's a lot easier when you've just been on the other side of the table for like four and a half years. Two, our co-founder chief scientist is one of 15 people in the world that has actually produced materials on the ISS. He has microgravity material science experience. And then three, our co-founder and CEO, Will, has been a lead hardware engineer on the crew in the Cargo Dragon and been head of mission control for eight of the Cargo ISS missions. So he's also one out of 15 people in the world that has expertise in bringing things back down from space. And so I think that's the mistake that some co-founding teams make when they're like forming their team with. They'll think about, oh, well, I should just like co-found my team with like people that I'm friendly with or prior co-workers. And it's like, no, no, no. If you want to create a world-class company, you need to get world-class people at the core risk areas of your business, even if that means that they're not necessarily your like best buddy from college or something like that. Because I think what people underappreciate is if you actually study over the past decade, the various like IPOs that have been created or that have happened from venture-backed companies, and you look at the amount of time that the founders knew each other before co-founding the company, there's effectively no correlation between like amount of time knowing each other and likelihood or percentage chance of getting to IPO. And so I think people have this artificial view in their mind of they teach you in college, like, oh, there's co-founder risk. Make sure it's somebody that you really, really trust. And it's like, no, trust is not what makes successful co-founding relationships. Having the world-class skill sets that you need to succeed is what will then form that trust that will allow you to succeed and people think about it backwards in some ways and then that's how you should be assessing it as a like vc don't just assess the story because you like the story and you like the business or you like how the ceo talks it's like no is this ceo world class for this business like the other way that i like to explain it is like elon musk is an incredible ceo and has driven spacex very very far zuckerberg is an incredible ceo and has driven now meta very very far but they would be fucking terrible ceos for each other's companies Zuck would have no idea how to crack the whip on his like softy engineers that want smoothies all day and like massages and things like that. And they would never deliver a rocket on time. And Elon would be tweeting some random bullshit that would constantly get him in front of senatorial hearings that would get his company basically regulated to death. They would be terrible at each other's businesses. And so there is no one singular concept of a top tier CEO. It is for this particular company, what is the biggest risks of this company and what does it need to succeed? And what would a top tier CEO look like that would be able to address those key risks? Anyways, long way to answer, but those are the things that I think both founders miss when forming their co-founding teams and venture investors miss when they're assessing founding teams. 